Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna be going through the 40 gate asset view and OT view as well. Also, we'll be discovering the 40 gate 7.4 feature we can where you can set default per do level per interface. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video. Let's get started. So this is the 40 gate that we have in our environment. The 40 gate is on build 741. Now uh, the asset identity can be browsed to from security fabric. I said ident asset identity center. Now, what is the asset identity? So the asset identity, the 40 gate pulls information uh, or, or like gets information from uh, devices, from uh, users, from addresses and pull all these uh, information into a single pane. Uh, as you can see here, we have um, device information, uh, software OS uh, of these devices, IP addresses, what users are authenticated through the firewall. For example, we have a user here, John, and the status of these devices. You can add more columns into this uh, page, as you can see. And on the top, we can see uh, these dashboards or uh, widgets, and uh, we can see what interfaces those uh, products, uh, you know, uh, the, sorry, those devices belong to, the status of these, the vulnerabilities, which include uh, 40 guard IoT vulnerabilities, which require a license, and 40 client vulnerabilities as well. Right now, we don't have any vulnerabilities in the network. Also, what softwares. Uh, are these uh, devices we can um, change the time of this dashboard you know we can view the latest or we can view information an hour ago or 24 hour ago or a week ago now there is the asset view which groups information by devices and there is identity view which groups information by users so right now we only have one authenticated user which is john and you can see that john have a pc device and the mac address and also the ip address of john all right now if we want to populate information here let's get back to the asset uh, how do we populate information in here we we need to have the device detection enabled on the firewall. Now, how do we do that? Uh, we go to the interfaces and we access the interface. We want to detect devices behind and we enable the device detection feature on the firewall. All right. Uh, if, with the CLI, if you want to enable this feature with the CLI, you go config system interface, edit port one, and set device identification enable as you can see in here now the other view that we wanted to talk about is the ot view now the ot view by default is not enabled on the firewall if we want to enable that on the firewall we have to go to system uh, feature visibilities and then we enable the iot or ot operational technology feature all right now Let's get back. So we're going to enable that and we're going to go to the security fabric again, uh, asset identity center. And we're going to see that there will be a tab available here called OT view. Now with the OT view, there are uh, different levels available or different Purdue uh, level available. Uh, these Purdue level you can find uh, in the document, uh, for the document, which I'm going to pull it out just now. Uh, give me a second. So each level uh, has devices. So this is um, the list of Purdue level based on the OT. Uh, network topology for example uh, level one would have 
the PLC devices or RTU or IEDs and it's called basic control. Uh, by default, level 2 would have the 40 gate or 40 switch, like the 40, uh, 40 gate and 40 switch device. This is something that you cannot change. But the rest of the devices in here, you could change them. Now, by default, all the devices belong to uh, Purdue level or assigned to Purdue level 3. So if we want to change that, we can click on the unlock view and then we can drag any VM we want to any level that we want. So for example, if it was a PLC VM you have, you will drag it to level 1. Now after making this change, if you go back to the asset identity list, we can also add here the Purdue level. And we can see here Purdue level 1 for this VM. Now another way to change the Purdue level is by editing in here and selecting the Purdue level that we want. Now again, how do you know which uh, Purdue level, you know, to uh, or where to assign the device to what Purdue level? Now you could belong you could refer, sorry, to this graph and see um, what device belongs to what Purdue level. So mentioning earlier that all the devices belong to Purdue level 3, and for the OS uh, 7.4, you could change that. So you can change where the, the, the default Purdue level per interface. So for example, right now, all the Purdue, all the devices that I have are behind port 1, I believe. Let's see. So most of the devices are behind port, port 1. And by default, these uh, all these VMs were assigned to Purdue level 3. Now, if I want to change that, <clears throat> excuse me, I could go to the CLI, Config System Interface, Edit Port 1, and I could do set default Purdue level, let's say, 2. Or let's say, actually, 4. Make sure 4 isn't there. Yeah, 4 isn't there. Or let's do 5. Um, now, if I want to set the default Purdue level, I need to make sure that device detection is enabled. If device detection is disabled in here, this command um, set default per level is not going to be available. So I need to make sure set device detection is enabled. Set default per level 5 and end. Now I changed the default per level for devices that are behind port 1. Now if I want to make sure that this change is going to be reflected. I need to clear the device list in here. So I'm going to go to the CLI, do diagnose user device clear. Come back in here, just give it a minute. All these devices should be cleared. Just might take a second. So it started clearing up. So you can see the list has been shortened. And the devices now are coming back assigned to Purdue level 5. Because we changed the Purdue level for the, for the uh, interface port 1 to 5. Okay, so uh, that was all we wanted to discuss about in this video. Please like and subscribe if you like this uh, video. And stay tuned for future videos. Thank you all for watching.